Hi, Faith United Youth and others. Welcome to our third week in the book of James. I take that back. It's actually our fourth week in the book of James. The first week was our introduction, so this is our fourth week, but we are in the third chapter of the book of James. Now, I know that the rest of our congregation is actually in the fifth chapter this week, um, actually starting starting new into the Advent series, but um, because I wanted to take my time with this, we are in chapter three and our youth series, uh, which is on Wednesday nights, we'll continue this actually through the beginning of December. And um, because there is so much in this book and I wanted to kind of take my time with it. Um, tonight, like I said, we are in chapter three of the book of James and we have explored a lot together and so we will continue. I'm going to actually read uh, chapter three verses one through verse 12. So if you'll listen with me to the word of God. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Um, James kind of off the bat, he, he kind of speaks about, you know, teachers in this and like not everybody should, you know, wanna be a teacher because, you know, you're gonna be judged more harshly. Um, then he goes right into all of these kind of analogies and metaphors for uh, one very specific thing that he's talking about. And so if you're reading along, you're kind of like, whoa, James, what are you talking about? You know, like suddenly you're talking about like bits in the mouths of horses and, you know, and and rudders and ships and sparks in a, in a forest. You know, it, it may be a little bit confusing. So let's kind of break this down a little bit, all right? So when he talks about in verse three, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. So James is speaking to a very specific audience who would have immediately known what this was talking about, okay? So like us in modern day, maybe some of you have dealt with horses and kind of understand what a bit is and why it's important. Um, for the rest of us, um, you know, I grew up in Hartville, so, you know, I am familiar with horse culture, um, but like, I'm not like a horse rider. I've rode a horse maybe twice in my life. Um, actually, the first time I rode a horse, I kicked it because I thought that's what you were supposed to do. I saw that on TV and I was like maybe or no, 12 or something. And um, it did not have the outcome that I anticipated. I did not realize that when you kicked a horse, uh, it just went. And so um, I learned a lot that day about horses. And um, but what James is talking about with the horse and the bit in the mouth is basically, you know, if you have a horse, imagine a horse, you put it a bit in its mouth and there's like, you know, the, the, the strings, of course, I, like I said, I don't know much about this, but you know, how to steer the horse is you move the horse with that small little piece in its mouth and it can go this way if you steer it that way with the small little piece in its mouth attached to your, whatever that's called, the, the strings that hold the horse. After I do this video, I'm going to remember and I'm going to be like, oh, that was really stupid. Anyways, you're thinking of it right now. Um, 
so you can steer the horse this way or that way. Likewise with a, a boat, okay? So James is talking to people who would have really inherently understood what this is talking about, okay? So, you know, he's talking about a small rudder on a boat and it has the ability to steer this way or steer that way. And what he's talking about is with our tongues. Uh, what do you mean tongues? You know, like we're not horses. You can't just like put something in our mouth and make us go this way or that way. What he's talking about is what we say has the ability to change the course of our lives. Okay, I wanna say that again, because I think that's really important for us to understand. What we say has the ability to change the course of our lives. Now, even going a little bit farther in depth in this, Jesus spoke about what is the wellspring of the heart is what a person's life will be, okay? So, and he also talks about, you know, whatever you say is, it springs from your heart. And so it starts even deeper, okay? But, if there are bad things in our hearts and those come out, it has out of our mouths, out of our tongues, it has the ability to change the course of our lives. And we can move in this direction when really we may not have been intending to do that. And then we look back and we think, oh no, how did I get here? You know, and it's because of what James calls the great evil of our tongues. Um, I want you to consider for a second when you have been hurt or harmed by words, and I know that we have, can all uh, testify to moments in our lives when we have been harmed by what somebody has said, and we can equally testify when we have harmed others with our tongues. James comes down extremely hard about this topic because he's saying this is of utmost importance. He compares it to a fire that, you know, it's a spark that starts and it spreads and it spreads and it spreads. And I want you to think about if you've ever had somebody gossip about you or tell a lie or a half truth even and how far that spread and how damaging that was to you, um, either to your life or your heart. And, um, you know, there's a reason why James calls the tongue uh, a restless evil full of deadly poison. That's pretty intense. And yet, um, you know, he goes even farther. And this is something that I think that we can all feel kind of um, a little uncomfortable with when we read this because it's, it's convicting, right? Like it, it makes us feel a little bit like, oh, I better work on that. He says, with the tongues, with our tongues, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Um, if you're an adult, uh, I want you to think about Facebook <laughs> in, in regards to this verse, and you might be a little bit like, you know, where have you seen cursing of brothers and sisters? You know, if you're a student, uh, if you're one of our youth students, think about Instagram, or think about the gossip train at your school, or, you know, what you heard about that, that kid the other day, and, um, you know, the, we just came out of our series about being made in God's image and, and our identity in, in Christ and what that means. And uh, it's, it's a good refresher from James that we are all made in God's image and we all deserve respect. And, you know, James is basically saying, like, please do not treat others in this way and why that's so important. Um, and he's using all of these different uh, you know, ways for us to, to, to see this. You know, I wonder if James wrote this book today. I think that he would probably say like, you know, you go to church and you praise God and the next minute you're trash talking people on Facebook or the next minute you're, um, you know, sharing gossip about kids at school. You know, I think that, you know, we can, we can look back at this book and there's so many things for us today. Um, and it's interesting to kind of contextualize it and, and put it into our our time frame. But I want to encourage you, you know, this, um, I think, is a very important thing that James is trying to get across. And that is that, you know, we are all made in God's image and we need to control our tongues and the things that we say. We need to control what comes out of our mouths because it has power. And if you think that words don't have power, um, I want you to think about when words had power in your life. And let that be an encouragement to you to, to spread blessings 
to encourage, to share love and joy, and to lift people up instead of tearing people down. Um, and I hope that you can take that in. And this week, maybe within yourself, you can say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be an encouragement to people this week instead of tearing people down. And what a blessing that will be. So I just encourage you with that. Thank you guys again for listening in. Uh, next week, we'll look at James 4. And thank you again for, for uh, spending some time with me. Thanks again. Bye.